Greetings from St. Peter's UCC here in Millbury, Ohio. For those of you that are with us this morning, we extend a warm welcome. Even though we can't be here in person, we know you're here in spirit. As we prepare for worship, let our hearts be in an attitude of worship. Join me now in our responsive call to worship. But excuse me before I go there. Please excuse me. I'm just a little excited. This is a wonderful time of the year. I have one joy, I guess, to share with all of you that I've been made aware of. Uh, following the service last Sunday, uh, Brenda Zacharias reached out to me and with an update on Chuck. His uh, ultrasound was unconclusive. He is scheduled for uh, an upcoming MRI. But at this point in time, they don't know anything more than that. But they did want to say they really appreciate all the prayers and messages and to keep that up. So that is the only thing I'm aware of at this point in time. So now let us join in our call to worship. Awake, people of God, and stay alert for Christ's coming. Grace to you and peace from God who sent Jesus to us. Make your ways known to us, O God. Show us once more your awesome presence. We are all God's people. No one is excluded. Come together as God's family for worship and prayer. Let the mountains quake before you, mighty God. Let the nations tremble in awe and reverence. Praise the one who grants us the gifts of life. Give thanks for God's continuing faithfulness. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God is true for all time and in all places. Join me now in our prayer of invocation. Amid threatening clouds of anger and selfish strife, come, O God, to bright light. Into our days of worry and anxiety, send a confident hope. Enrich us with spiritual gifts that transcend disappointments, and spill out in generous compassion for all your suffering children. Meet us today where we are, so we may be equipped for trials yet to come, and for joys yet to be revealed. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is from Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. This ends our first reading. It is time now for the start of our Advent candle. And I've asked Alex to join us today. Hopefully someone will join me each week as we move closer to the center candle. Alex, will you start this for us this year? 
The first candle we light this Advent season is the candle of hope. Our hope is in God, who is merciful and gracious. Let us pray. Almighty God, God, we come, come to you as imperfect people. May your anger turn to mercy as we call upon your name. Forgive us and have mercy on us, for our hope is in you. Amen. Thank you. Our second reading today is from 1 Corinthians. And it's chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened amongst you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called in the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This ends our second reading. It is time for prayer. We're going to pause a moment for a silent prayer amongst us. Then I will lead us in a pastoral prayer and we will end with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and loving God, on this Sunday, the first Sunday of the new church year, we turn to you with excitement in our hearts and minds, for we know in our own way and anticipate the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We shout out to the members of this church prayers of health, safety, peace, joy, and love, and hope that within their hearts, they can exhibit these things in ways that are pleasing to God. For the leaders of this church, for the members of this church, as always, we would just pray that as they move about, Lord, keep them safe, keep them healthy. For this country of ours, Lord, it is a troubling time. We have a pandemic, an election that's still going on, it seems. Bring us to an understanding. Bring us together as one. Bring us peace, bring us good health. Help a cure be found sooner than later, and let us all resume what we hope can be a normal life once again. We would now pray together that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, how would be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. third reading this day is our gospel reading. It is from Mark. It's chapter 13, verses 24 through 27. It is entitled, The Coming of the Son of Man. 
But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds and from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. The word of God for the people of God. today, I considered that word hope, and I considered what it meant to me personally. And if you think about the word hope and what it means, there are so many different ways that we can use that word in today's use of language. We hope for a good outcome. We hope for good results from the lab test. We hope we get good grades on our test. We hope mom and dad won't be angry with us because we put a little debt in the car. <laughs> it's amazing how many different ways we use the word hope. But before I go any further and dive into this, I want to share a couple passages from the good book on the use of hope. From Job chapter 11, verse 18. And you will have confidence because there is hope. You will be protected and take your rest in safety. From Psalm 33, verse 18. Truly the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his steadfast love. From Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. And finally, from Romans chapter 15, verse 13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is my hope that as we cover Advent this year, that you take time to pick up the good book. And I will offer all of you this one suggestion. If when you get home and get on your computers, go to this following address, www.biblegateway.com, biblegateway.com. Put in the version of the Bible that you wish to look up. In our case, we use NIV. I use NRSV in my home church, which is Memorial. But then you'll find a search box where you can put in any word you want or any phrase you want and hit search and it will go through the Bible for you right in front of your eyes and it will bring up all the different places where that word is used. And words like hope, peace, joy, and love, which are going to be our four main themes for Advent, you put those in, and I tell you, they abound in our Bibles. But today we're talking about hope. And when I say I hope for the best, what word could I use to replace hope? What comes to mind for me is, I have faith. I have hope. When I look at that cross, I find hope right in the center of that cross. In this case, it's Sunday. What is my hope? My hope is in eternal life. 
I'm confident that's where I'm headed. Do, am I hoping? Do I have faith in that? Yes, I do, because I am a Christian and I believe. And that is the center of hope, is our faith. We must always keep that little four-letter word of hope right here on the front of our lips. Because it brings so much to so many people in so many different ways. You can offer encouragement with hope. You can offer support with hope. You can offer love with support. With that little word of hope, it goes on and on and on. It's amazing when we've got these messages out of the Bible for Advent that those four words came to the forefront. And in this case today, hope. Because our hope is in the coming of the Lord. Is it not? It is what Christians every year await with eager anticipation. But along the way, we hope that he will forgive us for our sins. We hope that we are worthy of his coming. We hope and pray for all those gifts that only he can give us. Yet, there are people out there that seem to be wandering through life because they've lost the faith, they've lost the hope, they, they've been blinded through whatever. You may have met some of these people. I had met one who truly was lost. Did I shun away from that person? No. No. I brought that person into the downstairs of our church and I gave him a glass of milk and a cup of cookies and we sat and talked for a few moments. After introducing myself and getting this person's name, we talked for a few minutes. That person was really, really hurting. That person did not know where to go, who to turn to. That person needed a friend. But more than anything, that person needed hope. By the time we got done talking, I think I might have started to instill a little hope in this person because I had provided some resources that this person could call upon I had been a kind shoulder for that person to lean on. I'd given him food and substance. I gave him a bright light. And in my own mind, I gave that person hope. There are many stories out there like that. There are many stories that I could share with all of you about hope. But, what I truly wish I had in front of me today is one of your little children. Because I would sit here and have that little child come up to me and I would kneel down. And I'd have them come up to me and I'd whisper in their ear. And I'd say, what is the greatest gift you could give mom and dad? And I'd, let, I'd be really curious to hear what they have to say. Because if there's one thing we could all learn, we could stop and learn from a child. Could we not? Out of the mouth of babes. Because they shoot from the hip. And sometimes they're right on the dot with what they say, are they not? It really is kind of amazing. But when I put it to kids, what I find is, all of a sudden, a little light bulb goes off. And I say, now, you got it? You, got, you know what you're going to say, right? And they go, yeah, I'm ready. And I say, go get mom and dad, go tell them. And they go running back to their mom or their dad or whoever's with them. 
and they share their message. And a great big grin is on the face of mom and dad or grandma and grandpa. And then I invite them to share what that experience was about. Because I want everybody to hear what just took place. Frequently, what the kids will say is, I went back to mom and dad, and I told them, I love you, and I'm going to be the best I can be. Wow. That's pretty special, isn't it? It's pretty special coming from a little kid. And I see hope abounding out of that little phrase, I'm going to be the best all I can be. Do they not have hope that that is true in what they're saying to their mom and dad? Is that not true for the parents who are hearing that message? They truly hope that that is going to be the case, that this child is going to grow up before them and be a fine, outstanding young man or woman, whatever the case may be. Hope, hope, it runs through our veins. It runs down the center of this aisle. It runs right into the cross before us. Open your hearts and minds. Close your eyes for a moment. Envision the worst things happening in life right now. You have no control over what's going on. Things are crashing down around you. Loud noises, sharp noises. It's all going south. And then you hear a little bell. And you listen. And everything stops. Hope, people. Hope. It makes the world go round. You have only to hope for the best. How many of you have heard this phrase? Hope for the best, prepare for the worst, and take what comes with what? A smile. None of us know exactly what we're going to do and say as we leave this place. We think we do. We don't know what we're going to run into when we go out that door. When we encounter the, the first person we happen to meet on a Monday morning, you don't know what you're going to say or do. You hope you're going to do the right thing, right? You hope, you, you hope you're going to make a difference. You hope you're going to be positive. You hope you're not going to have hair out of place, that you're not going to have, you know, only half your face shaved, whatever the case may be. You really hope you're going to present a good image of yourself in what you do. But you know what? There's not one of us out here in this world that are perfect. No one is perfect. And I want you to remember that each and every day. We do our best. We hope for the best. We prepare for the worst. We take what comes with a smile. So as you can see, that word hope kind of can be your, your center, your foundation for what you stand for. That faith can be your anchor stick upon which you stand. Hope for the best. Hope for the coming of our Lord. Hope that I am worthy enough that when my time comes, I'll be right there at his gate and enter the realm of eternal life. It is a hope that drives me each and every day. It is a thing that has brought me to this point in my life as a licensed pastor. It is my hope that when I deliver my word to you, that those words resound within you and make a difference in all that you do. Hope is very important in my life. And I hope that it too is important in your lives. Hallelujah. Amen.
I now invite you to join me in our unison prayer of dedication for food and water, for all the blessings of the land you have given us, for family and friends to enrich our lives. Our hearts overflow with thanksgiving to you, O oh God. We have been sheltered and empowered by your generosity. In Jesus Christ, we have been shown the way to the wholeness you intend for us. We dedicate our lives to the word and good news provided through Jesus Christ. In Christ's name, we hope and pray. Amen. Now, as we wrap up our worship on this day, may God's face smile upon you. May God's love enrich you. And may the hope of the world be a shining light every day in your lives. Go in peace. Amen.